So I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to serve in this role. At least I think I want to thank them. Um, <laughs> I am a computational biologist, and so I spend a lot of my time thinking about the intersection of computational thinking and STEM, and so I think that's why I was invited to be um, one of the synthesizers. And I also want to say that I think it was actually pretty clever of me to wear the same shirt that I have on in the picture. So <laughs> if you don't like what I say, you can find me easily and berate me afterwards. Um, so the two themes or topics that stood out for me at the meeting were computational thinking, defining that, and computational modeling. Um, so I'm going to approach those. So um, I saw a number of definitions of computational thinking at the meeting, formulating problems and their solutions in a way that a machine or computer can be used to represent the problem, carry out its solution, a set of methods and strategies to solve problems using algorithmic solutions, and an algorithm is just a sequence of steps. Each step is doable and finite and can be implemented. That's more of a computer science approach to the definition. Um, and in terms of computational thinking in STEM in particular, I saw a lot of people that were using the Weintraub et al. Uh, taxonomy, and that is something that we use as well in our work. But it didn't seem like there was a general consensus. And one of the questions that kept coming up at the sessions that I was at was, how can we operationalize and assess what we can't define clearly? Um, and so, Um, and so it seemed to me that there was more agreement on the component pieces of computational thinking than the big umbrella. Um, and so I wonder if we can agree to clearly define components of CT that are crit critical to a particular STEM field and to operationalize and assess those. And just as an exemplar of what I mean by that, um, I, in one of the sessions that I was at, I thought that this project was a wonderful exemplar, so I'm going to plug them. Um, the Designing Biomimetic Robots, which is on page 28. Um, this is Deborah Bernstein and her colleagues at Turk and Tufts. Um, and the idea of the project is to support middle school students in thinking across three disciplines. Uh, they study the natural world to learn how animals accomplish tasks, and then they engineer a robot inspired by what they learn. And um, I apologize for the quality of this slide. I just took it uh, so there, it looked much nicer when they presented it. But I thought it was such a nice way of breaking down exactly what they were looking at and putting a computational thinking practice in every piece of what they were studying. Now, you can't see it well here, but they also have grayed out science practices and engineering disciplinary practices. And so it's such a nice way of showing how the, that integration of computational thinking across all of these um, disciplines is so useful. And then by this, by breaking down into all these different steps, they can then, um, just for an example, take one of them, algorithmic, algorithmic thinking, and define that clearly, and then operationalize it in terms of the context of their project. Um, and so, of course, this produces a contextualized assessment, but it's very well defined and useful, and I'm so happy that we're um, planning to start to share assessments, um, because I think that will be so useful, even if they're, they're somewhat specific to projects. We can definitely learn from sharing each other's assessments, and I know we're going to talk more about that later. Um, so moving on um, to computational modeling, I think computational modeling is such a great example of the power of integrating CT and STEM, and that's certainly one of the things that we were supposed to be thinking about. Um, so in particular, in biology, for example, building a simulation of a biological phenomenon deepens the understanding of both the biology and the computational <laughs> thinking. So you have to think about, you have to abstract out from your biological system what are the important components that I'm going to put in my model. So it brings the two of them together in a really powerful way. Um, I find, and I think I've seen this in a number of projects, that modeling is one of those things that's somewhat intuitive to teachers once they start doing it. And we, another thing that has come out of the meeting is the difficulty of getting teachers, um, uh, the uptake of teachers. So something that's more intuitive is a really useful um, uh, place to start. And it's also very inclusive in that students that are, get engaged with these models, they don't necessarily realize that, oh, there's some computational thinking here that I'm learning. And so you can bring them into the fold. Um, another thing that came out of one of the uh, models, uh, one of the projects that I saw by Guadam Biswas sorry, at Vanderbilt, um, was the um, intersection between debugging and the simulation cycle. So by the simulation cycle, we mean we build a simulation with, that's based on the science. 
Um, we run it, we see what predictions it makes. Does it agree with the data that we know it should? If it doesn't, then we have to add something more to the model, and so it's a cycle. And so this fits in very well with the idea of debugging, and what Guadam says is that students learn rapidly through the feedback of running the model, which is great, they get that immediate feedback, but they sometimes have trouble figuring out is the code wrong? Did I make an error in the coding part? Or is it actually the simulation that's missing something? And sometimes, this came up at um, the, the modeling uh, 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 session that was here, um, th there's a danger that the students trust the model <laughs> more than the data. So they, they build this nice model and then they say, oh, whatever it says must be true. And so it's very important, it's such an important conceptual thing for them to understand that the data are primary and the model is in service of trying to understand the data. So another thing that came out of that computational modeling um, session was the idea that maybe there's a lot of projects here that are involving modeling and maybe we should be sort of thinking big about computational modeling and defining some sort of progressive K-12 curriculum that would allow us to then assume a, a student knowledge base as we move uh, from K through 12. So I think I'm gonna stop there. Thank you very much.